it is Mary. And I'm Mom. Leave a like, like, subscribe, share, and comment down below. Because today we are reviewing season six, episode six <laughs> of Sister Wives, you guys. And we're going to get right into it. This episode is all about sex and purity. <laughs> sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> But okay. we're talking about Robin's purity in specifically. Not to get into your business, girl, but you put it out there on the show, so we don't talk about it. But I thought it was very beautiful, the way you did it. I, I thought it was I very really interesting. So. Yeah. So, she said that. But basically, they have house church now in the homes they've all moved in or whatever, but they do church because they do not have a church over there in Las Vegas. So, they do it at home. And what Cody does, he tells stories, he gives his... um the scripture or whatever, but then he asks the wives specifically to all come out and talk about specific stories. Yeah. Robin, well, Cody, oops, touching my leg. Cody told Robin to talk, to tell the kids about purity because all of his kids are getting older mm -hmm. um, and most of them are headed off to college. So I yeah. guess he wanted them to talk about this. Yeah. So basically what happened was she sat down there, she told the story, but she didn't say it was her. She said, I'm going to tell you two stories about two... Two girls. Two girls or whatever. And basically Robin's story was that, you know, you know, she was a very good girl. She was very chaste. You know, up until a time, whatever, where she started questioning her faith. She was okay. dating this young kid or she whatever. She was 19. She was in college. Yeah, she was 19 in college. Um, she was dating this guy who basically kept on begging her for it or whatever, and she was still questioning her faith. She had moved to Montana, and that's so what she was not. Really happens. Yeah, with the first. Yeah, she moved away, so she wasn't going to quite church. Obsessed yeah, with being the one who you give your virginity to. Yes, but um, yeah. So basically, she um moved to Montana. She wasn't really connected to her faith anymore, or whatever. She was dating this guy. Mm -hmm. And he basically begged her. She ended up giving, um, mm -hmm. having premarital sex, and she actually ended up getting pregnant. And she talked about it. She said purity. She didn't say virginity or whatever. She said purity, which I really like that actually. This anyway. is how I feel about it. Okay. Um, purity, yes. Um, I don't feel like sex is an un, is like is an impure thing. Like, personally, I don't feel like it is. I feel like in the wrong context, in the wrong source, in the wrong way, it can be impure or not pure or whatever the case may be. But I feel like if it's in marriage, then it is a beautiful thing. It is something I think, that I think is upheld. Trying to say, but no, purity, I, mean, I don't feel saying. like even if you go and you make a mistake um, and you have sex or whatever, I don't think it makes you impure. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like you've made a mistake. Like, we're not perfect. Some mm -hmm. of us... You know, I feel like there's some people who hold on to their virginity as this thing, as this cape, as this badge of honor, and they use it over people's head. Like that late, like that girl, um, Iris, in mm -hmm. Married at First, First Sight, Sight yeah. where she basically didn't want to... I think she was just very happy about that she was, you know, that she... I know, but she kind of held it over his head as if she was, like, this amazing person, but she had, like, her own issues as well. Like, I felt mm -hmm. like she was very kind of odd, too, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um... But I feel like I don't think there's anything wrong with calling it pure, but also I just don't want like the connotation that maybe yeah, you're and not pure yeah, if you don't. I what like you're it's saying. like it's the greatest gift. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I don't I know think if it's the greatest saying, gift you ever have. I feel like it's something that you should definitely hold on to, yeah, it's, and it's, it's something sacred. That's why yeah. I like I like to call it something that's very sacred that you decide yeah. that I'm going to share this experience with somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm giving it to you and you have like like you're this be older or whatever my purity. Like I just feel like I'm give I am giving myself to you because yeah. we have and both then, chosen to give our give ourselves to each other exactly. in and marriage it's the same thing and also in a commitment. For the man, I think too. Absolutely, if this goes virgin, both ways. He also feels that way. But I love when she called it purity. I think this is the first time I've heard purity, you know, that. I just don't like the and word so here. that's why I actually kind of liked it. And, um, and yeah, she, she also did say that there was, for her, giving her purity, losing her purity to this guy who was not deserving of it and who was begging her for it, set her on this path where she of hell for nine him. or ten yes so he actually so married him nine years yeah and it, what it was a marriage from hell she said and they started having she got pregnant and they had two more children for him 
Um, and so it was just on this spiral, right? And she says that, um, you know, she really realized that she had made a mistake and just kept on praying, you know, probably for God's deliverance. But she was already in a marriage. And then, you know, was able to get out of that and really receive God's blessing, I guess, too. Because yeah. now she's here with Cody. This is her first time ever owning a home. And even even the house that she lived in, she said that was like the, the, the best place that she had lived in before. Yeah, because this was, was probably some young couple who had nothing going for exactly. himself, had no money, nothing. Well, college so, student, too. I don't even know if he was a college student. Maybe someone who hung around college students. But what I like, but so, I feel like when she told the story, I felt like I could, I like, I felt more like I could relate to her and yeah. empathetic. You know what I'm saying? She was kind of like, dramatic because she put the, it was like, she I feel like you heart, had to be dramatic. Especially for the children, you know, for those young ones. And she put it there. She's like, and she gave her period, and then she let her hands go, and he fell on the floor. No, she threw it down because he. You know, she, she said, said he treated it like trash or whatever right. stuff like that. And then she said that, um, but the other girl, she talked about the other girl, who did give. So she she talked about another girl who did give her purity to that husband, the one who was deserving of it. Well, she said you can regain you know. your purity back. And so, which I mean, in um, that sense, is yes, it's fine. Yeah, I feel like you know, uh, because you know, we always talk about God's forgiveness and stuff like that. So, I just thought it was such a beautiful story, and the kids were paying attention, yeah, as opposed to when the father was talking, they were all yawning. But when Robin was talking, I think their eyes were it wide really open. showed. And one of the children even said, You know, that story made me not want to do anything. <laughs> Until marriage, so that yeah. Was but I the, think that whole thing is very relatable for a lot of women and stuff like I that. And so. I think also with and her also telling her story, too. it was good because then it's like you know I understand where she's coming from. I see why she had decided. You know, I had done something wrong. I had set me down on a path for almost nine, ten years yeah. of a horrible life. Yeah. I have to get myself together. I have to choose the right person. For I have to kids, find the right man for yeah. my future. So. When I finally understood the backstory of Robin, I was like, I can appreciate who she is as a person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I did feel like she was dis 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 disingenuous, and I felt like yeah. she was manipulated. Yeah. But I feel like I can understand Robin from that point of view. And what was beautiful and was I that And I feel like every woman came. has made mistakes in life. And when Absolutely. you go out of your way to correct it, you get reconnected with God, which I, I can relate so. to a lot. I yeah. feel like it can really be a blessing for you, Absolutely. and God always yes. forgives you regardless. Absolutely. So I thought it was a beautiful, beautiful story, I so. and I thought the way she told it, I'm glad she didn't say, it's me, because I feel like as soon as you say it's me, because like, well, she did it, why can't I do it, and she's fine, <laughs> you know what but, I'm saying? You know, what but I felt beautiful I about, nice. it, about the story also is that she, said, she told them before she became his wife. That was she told them the first time she that met her all the wives. That is my thing. You know, my thing is... explain to them... I guess to explain to them where I'm coming from. Like, I have these, you know, children and stuff like that. I made this mistake. Because maybe they're wondering, well, huh, how she just left this... You know? Like, they're wondering, too, probably. My thing is, I... I do mean, think, I guess... Do you think that was cunning for her to do that? It could in be. A way. It could be so that she could have sympathy and empathy or whatever. But I don't think it really has helped her much because I don't think they really liked their, her. To open up their hearts to at least say yes, because like Cody said, the wives have to agree for yeah. him to marry, not just marry. Well, honestly, I don't really know how true that is because he's talking about getting a fifth wife, and all the wives really don't want another one. So I don't know how true that is. Well, he did say he's getting a fifth wife. Well, he 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 um insinuated he speaks, it. He keeps us talking about it. But I yeah, felt so like my thing really is, firstly, thing. I just don't feel, and I still stand by this. I don't feel like you need to sit down and tell your man everything you did, how you did it, how you yeah. twisted, how you flipped it, how you licked it, what whatever the case is. I don't mm -hmm. feel like you need to go and say anything. I don't think yeah, you but need I to know, tell them. Like, it's not that. Yeah. I don't think she did either, yeah. but also I feel like you have to, I don't know, I just... I personally, I'm not going to tell nobody what I did in the past. I, that's that is for I, you between know, me, feel, my God, and maybe my mama. I feel but that was it. something that she was still holding on to. That was something that she still needed healing from. I don't have to and say to nobody to get healing herself, you know. So that could could have been a while. I 
I ain't got to tell nobody nothing to get no healing. That's how I feel. I am already healed. I have already confessed my sins yeah. and God has forgiven me. That is my healing. I have yeah. gone to therapy. Yeah. That's just how I feel. I just don't feel like women need to. But I feel like women go ahead and start telling men all everything they do. Then they go ahead and they flip it on them and start using it as a chokehold to keep the woman down or to keep her where yeah. she is supposed to be yeah. or whatever. And so I don't agree with telling her past. I feel like vulnerable. it's a it has to be a unique situation. Mm -hmm. Like this is unique. She probably wants the wives to kind of understand her side and be like, I'm this poor woman who had these three kids. I made a mistake. Please bring me into your family so exactly. I can have a hero. Yeah. And Cody probably liked that whole narrative because yeah. the way he stares at her when she talks about giving up her purity, it is something. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but... Mm. No, I do not think for women who are in monogamous relationships, there is no reason for you to sit there and tell your man about what the hell you did. There is no point. Mm -hmm. You can tell that to God and let that be that. That's true. That's what you always tell me. That is what I always say. That is what I always okay. say. Yes. So. <laughs> but it, I mean, I can still also see. I can know, see her, her side. It's unique like situations. That. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, for every, mostly. No. You keep mm -hmm. that to yourself. No, there's no need for that, really. There's really but, no need, yeah. especially if you're in a monogamous relationship. But I relationship. feel like, that's why I feel like it's something that she is still kind of dealing with when she first came into the family. She had no Maybe tears. Maybe not anymore, but, you know. But yeah, she doesn't cry with tears. So but she, she cries never cries, from, okay? She don't, don't cry. She don't cry. She Robin cries does not cry. Her voice. But anyhow, it's this Mary. is Ed Abba. And we invite you guys to like, subscribe, share, and comment down 